Dr. Yoni Witten here, and this week we're talking about bunions. Let's get into this. Bunions are a huge problem, and a lot's been written about them in the scientific literature. Now, although no one factor has been shown to be the cause of all bunions, there are some really interesting trends and facts that we can consider when working to try and improve a bunion. This information comes directly from the Journal of Perioperative Practice. It was published back in 2007. One of the first trends that we know about bunions is that they tend to be way more common in women than they are in men. Another trend that that's, that's important to consider is that shoes tend to make these problems way worse. Other facts about bunions, like I said, four times more common in women than they are in men. It's not by accident. Women tend to wear shoes that are far more constrictive than men do. Bunions do occur in cultures where shoes are not worn, but they are far less common. Here, the wearing of high-heeled shoes or shoes where the big toe is squeezed into the other toes can be a contributory factor. Other common causes, repetitive strain injury, like repetitively jamming the big toe into the other toes, uh, faulty biomechanics, like a foot that overpronates, and here, importantly, ill-fitting footwear. This may be the most important causative factor. This article from 1991 in the Journal of Postgraduate Medicine said that bunions and bunionettes often respond to a change to wide, soft-toed shoes or sandals and the temporary use of a mild anti-inflammatory agent. Easy treatment for a challenging problem. This article from 2020 in the journal Frontiers in Bioengineering and Biotechnology was super interesting. The researchers started off with a simple hypothesis that bunions are predominantly an acquired condition that's brought on by wearing constrictive footwear. And they constructed this elaborate computer model and they inputted eight different subjects and they measured them under barefoot conditions and under shoe wearing conditions. They tested angulation of the bones, stress on the ligaments and joint capsules, and basically what would happen over time under both of those conditions. And they found that without a doubt, wearing shoes that jam the big toe inward had the potential to create a bunion. Their overall conclusion was that their hypothesis that bunions might be developed by wearing shoes was absolutely verified by their computer model. There's a quick and easy way to determine if the shoes that you're wearing are potential contributors to your bunion problem. It's called the trace test. The only thing that you need for this is a pen or pencil, some paper, and the shoes that you wear most frequently. Now, once you've got those, you're ready to go. To perform the trace test, you'll take one shoe and place it as near as you can to the dead center of that piece of paper. You'll then take your pen and trace around the outer margin of the sole of the shoe keeping it as tight to the sole as you possibly can. And really what I'm interested in here is just the front half of the shoe. You're then gonna take your foot and superimpose it over that tracing. Make sure it's the corresponding foot to the shoe that you just traced. Get it as near as you can to dead center of that outline. I'm gonna use a different color here so that you can see this very clearly. As I trace around the outer margin of my foot. Again, what I'm really interested in here is just the front half of the foot. Once you've got that, you've got the results of your trace test. So you can see very clearly from this image what's going to happen to that big toe when you force it into that confined space. It's going to jam it towards the center. This makes it very clear why stuffing the feet into a shoe that doesn't have the physical space to accommodate it might not be such a hot idea for anybody with bunions. So the first step on the road to recovery for anybody with bunions is probably pretty obvious at this point, right? It's to stop doing the things that contribute to the formation of a bunion. Now that means getting rid of any footwear that fails the trace test. Get that out of here. What you're going to want to do instead is switch over to footwear with a much larger, more accommodating toe box. And you can see here that I'm a big fan of the shoe company Altra. These are three different models and just look at how wide they all are through the front of the shoe. These shoes also have the advantage of being what's called zero drop, meaning that the height at the back of the shoe is exactly the same as it is at the front of the shoe. So when you're wearing these, 
your foot rides completely level. Unlike a shoe that has an elevated heel where you run the risk of jamming those toes down into the toe box, further contributing to the formation of a bunion. So those are three different models of Altras. They make a ton of different models. This is another shoe company that makes zero drop, very wide shoes called Vivo Barefoot. This is their boot, same height at the back and the front. Just look how wide it is through the toe box. So when I'm wearing shoes like these, my risk of developing a bunion is exponentially lower. Once you've gotten rid of or set aside all of your shoes that fail the trace test, you're done with step number one. Remember, ill-fitting footwear is thought to be the most important contributing factor to the formation of bunions. So painful though it might be, it is a necessary step. Once you're done with that, you're ready to move on to step number two, which is to start restoring proper alignment to the big toe and creating some space between the toes. Now for that, I like to use a simple inexpensive tool called toe separators. And for the longest time I used these, they're called awesome toes. I still love them. They're very durable, thin around the edges, and they create great spacing between the toes. But recently I switched over to these and they're just a very generic model. And when I stack the two on top of each other, you're going to see why I switched because look how low profile this blue one is in comparison to the awesome toes. And what that allows me to do is to wear this blue toe separator inside of my ultras all day long and be getting the benefit for hours and hours on end. Now, that's not the way to start off with toe separators, whether you go with the awesome toes or the generic model. You're going to want to start off with just 5, 10, 15 minutes a day and then slowly build up over time. But I eventually got to the point where I wanted to wear these all day long and I needed a model that could fit comfortably inside of my shoes and that's why I made the switch to these blue generic toe separators. One other strategy that we touched on earlier in that journal article from postgraduate medicine was the use of an anti-inflammatory agent in conjunction with physical rehabilitation and removing the insult. And for this, I would direct you to Movement Essentials Joint Relief. It's got 10 powerful ingredients, all in their most bioavailable forms, all at therapeutic doses, working synergistically together to decrease inflammation, decrease swelling, and improve functionality. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll put the information to good use. To pick up the toe separators that we talked about or to get Movement Essentials Joint Relief, use the links in the description down below. I'm also gonna put down there a list of shoe companies and brands that use a wider, more accommodating toe box. Be sure to check those out. But before you head over there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and toggle notifications to all so that you get notified every time a new video drops. That's all for now. See you next time.